hi guys i'm the beer and in the fourth part of my museum video series i will be taking a look at all the birds present in the ark survival evolved game so let us begin so i have color coded the bird museum to be light blue or cyan because all the birds were to be uh, well birds are associated with the air and the skies which is blue in color that's why so this is my birds museum and i'll start off in lexicographic order and the first bird in my museum also happens to be the first bird that has ever evolved it is called archaeopteryx which means ancient wing now archaeopteryx was a genus of bird like dinosaurs that is transitional between non avian feathered dinosaurs like raptors and modern birds this archaeopteryx lived in the late jurassic period around 150 million years ago in what is now southern germany and also portugal during a time when europe was an archipelago of islands in a shallow warm tropical sea much closer to the equator than it is now right now so this archaeopteryx was similar in size to a eurasian magpie with the largest individuals possibly attaining the size of a raven the largest species of archaeopteryx could grow to about 0.5 meter or 1 feet 8 inches in length with an estimated mass of around 0.8 to 1 kg which is like 1.8 to 2.2 pound now despite their small size point out despite their small size broad wings and inferred ability to fly or glide archaeopteryx had more in common with other small mesozoic dinosaurs than with modern birds in particular they shared a couple of features with dromaeosaurids and troodontids you know like raptors and troodon for example the jaws with sharp teeth three fingers with claws as you can see the three fingers with claws in them a long bony tail let me show you that a long bony tail and a hyper extensible second toe that is the killing claw which is what we know in all raptors you can see slightly hanging up so the killing claw is not very well present but it used to have a killing claw just like most of the raptors it also had feathers like raptors which also suggest that archaeopteryx may be warm blooded and it had other various features of the skeleton which was similar to dinosaurs than to modern birds well that was your archaeopteryx next we come to argentavis my favorite creature in this entire game now argentavis magnificens was among the largest flying birds ever to exist it was discovered from three sites in northwestern argentina dating from the late miocene epoch that is 9 to 6.8 million years ago this argentavis had a wingspan which has been estimated to be 5 to 6.5 meters which is <clears throat> 16 feet 8 inches to 21 feet 4 inches argentavis had an estimated height when standing on the ground that was roughly equivalent to that of a person at 1.5 to 1.8 meter furthermore its total length from the bill tip to the tail tip here was approximately 3.5 meter or 11 feet 6 inches Argentavis had a body mass of 80 kilos or or 180 pounds thus retaining the title of the heaviest flying bird known still by a considerable margin from the size and structure of its wings it is inferred that Argentavis magnificens flew mainly by soaring using flapping flight only during short periods it is probable that it used thermal currents as well now it probably preferred to scavenge for carrion but it would have displaced giant ground dwelling terror birds from their kills too unlike extant condors and vultures teratons like argentavis generally had long eagle like beaks <clears throat> and are believed to have been active predators argentavis may have used its wings and size to intimidate long land sorry argentavis might have used its wings and size to intimidate lone land predators of their kills and argentavis may have also ambushed some small live prey like 
large rodents, small armadillos, and the young of large animals such as ground sloths. Its skull structure suggests that it ate most of its prey whole rather than tearing off pieces of flesh like modern eagles. Well, that's about it, my favorite thing. Let's move on to the precarious dodo. Now, the dodo, scientific name Raphus cuculatus, is an extinct flightless bird that was endemic to the island of Mauritius east of Madagascar in the Indian Ocean. Sub-fossil remains show that the dodo was about 1 meter tall and may have weighed around 10.6 to 17.5 kilo in the wild. Though the dodo has historically been considered fat and clumsy, it is now thought to have well adapted for its ecosystem. It has been depicted with brownish grey plumage, yellow feet, a tuft of tail feathers, a grey naked head and a black, yellow and green beak. It used gizzard stones to help digest its food, which is thought to have included fruits and its main habitat is believed to have been the woods in the drier coastal areas of Mauritius. Unfortunately, human settlement of Mauritius brought about various uh, predators like cats, dogs and rats which ate the dodo's eggs and brought dodos to extinction in the 17th century. Next we have is the Hesperornis. Now Hesperornis means western bird. It is a genus of cormorant-like bird that spanned the first half of the Campanian age of the late Cretaceous period from 83.5 to 78 million years ago. Locations for Hesperornis fossils include the late Cretaceous marine limestones from Kansas and the marine shales from Canada. Nine species of Hesperornis are recognized, eight of which have been recovered from rocks in North America and one from Russia. This Hesperornis was a large bird, reach, reaching up to 1.8 meters in length. It had virtually no wings and swam with its powerful hind legs. Studies on the feet initially indicated that Hesperornis and kin had lobed toes similar to modern day gribes, as opposed to webbed toes as seen in more, most aquatic birds such as loons. Like many other Mesozoic birds such as Ichthyornis, Hesperornis had teeth as well as a beak. Now this Hesperornis was primarily marine and lived in the waters of such contemporary shallow shelf seas as the Western Interior Seaway, the Turgai Strait and the North Sea, which then were subtropical to tropical waters much warmer than today. Next we come is the Ichthyornis. Unfortunately, the taxidermy of Ichthyornis will always display this one pose. You cannot change it. It's a bug that has never been uh, fully done or maybe it's some sort of a prank done by the architects. Anyway, the Ichthyornis means fish bird after its fish-like vertebrae. It is an extinct genus of toothed seabird-like ornithuran from the late Cretaceous period of North America. Its fossil remains are known from the chalks of Alberta, Alabama, Kansas, New Mexico and Texas in strata that were laid down in the western interior seaway during the late Cretaceous about 95 to 83.5 million years ago. It is thought that Ichthyornis was the Cretaceous ecological equivalent of modern seabirds such as gulls, petrels and skimmers. An average specimen was the size of a pigeon, 24 centimeters long, with a skeletal wing wingspan of around 43 centimeters. Well, next we have is the Kairuku or the penguin. So, Kairuku is an extinct genus of penguin. It contains two species: Kairuku grevenefi and Kairuku waitaki. This taxon is known from bones from 27 million years ago from the late Oligocene, from the Kokoamu green sand formation of New Zealand. These Kairuku were up to 1.5 meters long when stretched out swimming and about 1.3 meters tall when standing on land. Its estimated body mass was at 60 kilos or more, which is 50% more than the largest penguins of today. Yeah, that's right. 
Emperor penguins, which are the largest of today, grows to about 1 meter high and weighs a maximum of 40 kilos, while these guys were more than 60 kilos. Now, from a distance, living Kairuku penguins would have looked similar to modern species, such as Emperor penguins. But up close, it is clear that both species of Kairuku had relatively longer bills and a more power and a more slender body than in today's species. The wings were relatively longer than in living species and could flex a little more at the elbow. Okay. Next we have is the Pelagornis. So Pelagornis is a widespread genus of prehistoric pseudo-toothed bird from the late Oligocene and early Pleistocene that is 25 to 2.5 million years ago. These were probably rather close relatives of either pelicans and storks or of waterfowl. Four species have been discovered of which the most recent one, Pelagornis sandersi, is believed to have had a wingspan estimated between 6.1 and 7.4 meters, making Pelagornis sandersi the largest flying bird ever, which is twice that of a wandering albatross, which has a which has the largest wingspan of any extant flying bird, around 3.7 meters. So you can see how big that is. So some scientists expressed surprise at the idea that this species could fly as well, given that between 20 and 40 kilos in weight, it might be too heavy. It would be considered too heavy by the predominant theory of the mechanism by which birds fly. Now. So, Dan Sepka of the National Evolutionary Synthesis Center in Durham, North Carolina is the person who discovered this species, thinks that it was able to fly in part because of its relatively small body and long wings and because it, like the albatross, spent much of its time over the ocean. Now this San Pelagorni Sandersi had short stumpy legs and was probably able to fly only by hopping off cliff edges. It has been estimated that it was able to fly at up to 60 km per hour. Like all members of the Pelagornithae, Pelagornis sandersi had tooth-like or knob-like extensions of the bill's margins, called pseudoteeth, which would have enabled the living animal to better grip and grasp slippery prey. So, before I sum Pelagornis up, I'll mention that Pelagornis is actually the largest bird and Argentavis is the second largest bird but the heaviest bird. Okay, next we have is the Snow Owl from Extinction. Now Snow Owl in this game is a fictional bird but Snow Owl actually exists in real life. So Snow Owl is called Bubo Scandiacus. It is a large white owl of the true owl family. It is sometimes also referred to as the polar owl, white owl and the arctic owl. These snowy owls are native to the arctic regions of both North America and the Palea Arctic, breeding mostly on the tundra. It has a number of unique adaptations to its habitat and lifestyle which are quite distinct from other extant owls. Now it is one of the largest species of owl, it is the only owl with largely white plumage, plumage meaning the feather. Males tend to be a purer white overall while the females tend to have more extensive flecks of dark brown. That is why you see in the game that the colors mostly sported are white shades of grey, brown and black. So that's it. <clears throat> Next we come is a rather important creature, the terror bird, one of my favorite creatures actually. Terror birds are actually called Forus hasids, colloquially known as terror birds, are an extinct clade of large carnivorous flightless birds that were the largest species of apex predators in South America during the Cenozoic era. That is, Cenozoic era is the era after the dinosaurs. Uh, in, that includes current day today. So, you know, they were the largest species of flightless birds and were the largest apex predators, so they were actually larger than jaguars. So, their conventionally accepted temporal range covers from 62 to 1.8 million years ago. They ranged in height from 1 to 3 meters. Most of these forus acids were very fast runners. 
all members possessed a large sharp beak a powerful neck and sharp talons the bones of the beak were tightly fused together making the beak more resilient to force from front to back direction thus suggesting that it could cause a great amount of harm through pecking as opposed to side to side head movements like shaking tree generally speaking it is thought that a terrier bird would use its feet to injure prey by kicking it and to hold their prey down and dispatch by picking at it with its large beak let me show its thing larger prey may also have been attacked by picking and kicking or by using the beak as a blade to strike at or slash the vital organs now i'll refer to two of the most important terrier birds the first one is Gastornis gigantea. It was a large terrier bird which could grow the size of the largest moa, and reached about two meters in maximum height. So that guy would actually be bigger than a Utahraptor. Finally, Titanis, another large terrier bird, was 2.5 meters tall and weighed approximately 150 kilogram. Thus, it might actually be taller than the Utahraptor, and you know. Close to the size of a Carnotaurus. That is huge, really huge. And if I if I remember correctly, these terrier birds were the primary reason why saber tooth cats and dire wolves, or not dire wolves, mostly saber tooth cats were small in size because they could not compete with terrier birds. As these terrier birds died out, saber tooth cats became bigger and became the apex predators. Lastly, we have the vulture. This vulture is the scavenging bird of prey. They rarely attack healthy animals but may kill the wounded or sick. When a carcass has too thick a hide for its beak to open, it will wait for a larger scavenger to eat first. Now, these vultures may don't look that much important, but actually vultures are of great value as scavengers, especially in hot regions because the vulture's stomach acid is exceptionally corrosive with a pH of only 1.0, allowing them to safely digest putrid carcasses infected with stuff like botulinum toxin, hog cholera bacteria, and anthrax bacteria that would be lethal to other scavengers, and thus it would remove these bacteria from the environment. A particular characteristic of many vultures is a bald head, devoid of normal feathers. Although it has been historically believed to help keep the head clean when feeding, the bare skin may play an important role in thermoregulation. Now, vultures have been observed to hunch their bodies and tuck in their heads in the cold and open their wings and stretch their necks in the heat. They also urinate on themselves as a means of cooling their bodies. Yeah, they actually do that. So, yeah. That was all the birds in this game. So that's about it for the bird museum. In the next part of the video, we will be taking a look at all the fishes that are there in this game. So till then, thank you for watching and stay tuned for more.